Today we're talking about three reasons that your foundation doesn't look smooth. Let's get into that video right now so that you can have smooth, flawless looking foundation every time. Hi girlfriends, let's talk about one of those things that just drives us all crazy is when our foundation doesn't look smooth on our face. And a lot of times we think, well, I, the I don't like this foundation. It looks like crap. Well, that might be the case in some instances, but it also could be the way that you're doing your foundation. And I'm going to show you all kinds of cool things to be able to help you with getting the most smooth, beautiful, flawless, flawless canvas that you can possibly get. Before we get started, let me just show you my outfit of the day. I have a red blazer on with jeans, red boots, and a beige belt, which is super cute. And then I also have a white bodysuit on underneath it. I'll leave all of the information for that below for you guys. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is it's so important to have your prep. Your prep includes lots of things. First of all, for me, my prep includes exfoliation and taking away any and all peach fuzz. This is a big deal because anytime you put that liquid foundation, cream foundation, whatever you're using on top of peach fuzz, the peach fuzz is still gonna rise. It's still gonna be there it's going to create texture. My favorite thing to use is the Tinkle razors and I get them like this. There's a ton of them on Amazon. They're very inexpensive and I'll show you a single one. This is just a straight razor. I love this and I'm not going to demonstrate this for you today, but I do have a video where I completely demonstrate it and I will refer you to that. It is actually another flawless foundation video where I actually do show you how to do this. So that not only takes away the peach fuzz, but it also does some exfoliating. Now in between, you know, using these, I don't use this every day. I use it maybe like every 10 days. Uh, two weeks, something in there where I'm, you know, just taking the peach fuzz off my face. So I'm not using this as an exfoliator, but you might need to use an exfoliator. I love a double duty product. And this is the cleanser that I use in the morning. This is from Eminence and it's organic skincare. It's Manoy age correcting exfoliating cleanser. This is extremely gentle and that's what I absolutely love about it. It has little micro beads in it. It doesn't tear up the skin. It doesn't cause too much exfoliation or irritation. It doesn't really cause any irritation at all. I use it with a wash rag and the wash rag helps with the exfoliation as well. So this is really great. I use it all the time and it's so important to me to make sure that I exfoliate exfoliate and then you can use a deep exfoliation if you want to in between there that's completely up to you i do have several that i like very much uh, that are chemical exfoliants that i use kind of every other day or whenever i need it i might do a deeper one so there are a few chemical exfoliants and i am happy to list those down below for you the other thing about prep is you must make sure that you have enough moisture on your face moisturizer plumps up that skin so anything that we put on afterwards is going to go across smoothly because we have those wrinkles and kind of, you know, fine lines, the pores all plumped up. And I know I preach about this all the time, but I never do my makeup without using two products. And that is the Suko Yaka Suhara. This is an essence. And then the eye cream. The eye cream to me is key for this under eye crypt keeper situation I have going with all of my wrinkles under there. So this is key for plumping that up. It is super hydrating. It's just absolutely the most hydrating thing that I've ever found along with this lotion as well. It's called a lotion, but it's actually an essence because you can see how watery it is. You can use this anytime during your skin prep. Now you can even use this after you've let your SPF sink in. So your SPF needs to sink in for about 20 minutes before it's really active and giving you good protection, but you can use this before that. You can use it as your first step. You can use it anywhere in your skincare that you want to. Just make sure that you're using it and that you're patting it into your skin really kind of deeply. That's kind of my key to everything is pushing it into the skin and allowing it to sit on there long enough to be able to plump the skin up and give me a really nice canvas. On to the second reason that you may not have the smoothest canvas possible. And that is because you're not using a good primer. 
Primer is so important. Lots of people feel like, well, I don't necessarily need a primer because I don't need to have my makeup last a long time. I'm not one of those people that their makeup wears off or anything like that. Primer was actually built with silicone and dimethicone in it um, originally to go into the pores and the wrinkles and the crevices and smooth them out. Anytime you see dimethicone on a primer, on a foundation, that's what it's built for, is to help our skin just look as smooth as it possibly can. So today I used two of my very favorites. I mixed them together. Revlon Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Makeup Skin Primer. And then I used the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion in light and I mixed them together and I just put them across my face and I really took time to push them into my skin. And then I let them set and I even went back over and I pushed it into my skin again. And then I went in with my foundation. So primers are very, very important. Look on your ingredients. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy these new, but look on your ingredients and see if your primer has dimethicone, silicone, anything like that in it, and you're going to have a smoothing primer. Most of them will, unless they say that on the label that they don't. So these are amazing. This actually, the, the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion gave it a little bit of a dewy glow, which I love as well. All right, the last thing is choosing a really good foundation. Now there are a ton of drugstore foundations and I love them. I absolutely love the Matte and Poreless from Maybelline. I love the new Catrice one. It's I think it's True Skin. I get these all jumbled in my head a little bit. I'm a huge lover of the number seven one. That has been my ride or die one for years. I think it is so beautiful on mature skin. I chose to try the KVD Beauty, this new one, their liquid foundation as opposed to their cream. I love their cream foundation, especially on a mature woman. Cream foundation to me, I just think it is the bomb for a woman that is mature because it's got that really creamy texture and it's not gonna dry you out at all during the day. I think a lot of people don't like a cream foundation or a pot foundation because they use too much. And that's what it's built to do is you just use a tiny bit and then if you need more coverage, use your concealer to just spot conceal. But a cream foundation is fantastic. Now this new one, I really did enjoy using today and putting on. I will tell you that it does not feel dewy, but it does not feel super matte. It's like a semi-matte or kind of a, in between a satin and a matte. I think it's a beautiful foundation and you know, it did really well on my face today. And again, I took a ton of time to press it into my skin. If you are someone that uses a brush to put on your foundation, that is not a problem because you want to continue to kind of stipple. You're pushing it in and, you know, really work with it to push it into the pores, into your skin. That's how you're going to get a nice canvas as well. After you've done that though, go back with a dampened beauty sponge. I always dampen my beauty sponge and I do spray it. Today I used a little bit of the Tower 28 spray. They did send me this and so I'm kind of testing it out a little bit, but I spray my sponge with it just lightly, maybe one or two pumps. And then I go in and I'm really dabbing as I go along. I'm really uh, stippling and making sure I'm pushing in. And I took a lot of time to do this today. People want a super fast makeup routine and that's fine. You can get a beautiful canvas doing a five minute, 10 minute routine. But if you want something that is like for a special occasion or you just have not been liking your foundation at all, try taking more time with really working and pushing it into your skin because that is truly the secret. If you ever sat in a makeup artist's chair, they're going to take time to really make the foundation the very best that it can be and that is with application and really working with it. Okay, the next one you're gonna go, Melissa, I cannot do that. I totally get it. I was somebody that swore off using powders for years myself. And for some reason in my mess that's in front of me as I was doing today's makeup, I cannot find the powder that I used. That was a Wet n Wild powder. I will make sure I list it down below. But what I do with powder is a little bit different than most people do. Because most people will go in, they will grab a bunch of powder and then they will just go in and they'll go like this and that's it. 
Well, I do it a little bit differently. I have learned through the years that it's better to take time with powder too. And the reason is, is because the powder is going to take down extra shine. It's going to really blur, blur your pores out. And so what I do is I'll go in on one side of the brush. This is a huge Sonia Kashuk brush. I've had it forever. I think that the handle has changed, but this is a really good brush. So I'll go in on one side and I pick up quite a bit. But what I do is I will take it and I will you know, kind of pounce it on the side of my hand just to get off a little bit of excess. And then I'm going to tap it just a little bit. And then I'm going to buff, just buff like a crazy person in here. And what happens is because you have so little powder on your brush, you're going to find that a little tiny bit goes a long way and just buff it. And the reason is, is because if you're buffing like this and you're kind of, you know, using the light hand, but you're buffing and you're really going around each place, it just really seems to be able to make the makeup just look flawless. Now, if you're somebody that is super dry like me, after you do that, you're gonna feel like, I am so sad that I did that because it just made me even more dry looking. Go back to that sponge. I love a makeup sponge. I'm a makeup sponge junkie, but these sponges are so inexpensive. They're from Beakley. I'll make sure that I list them. They are every bit as good as a beauty blender. I think they're even more soft and they perform. They don't fall apart. They just really are good sponges. Now, just take any sort of a setting spray, or even you don't even have to have a setting spray. You could have a primer spray, whatever spray you use, but I want it to not have alcohol in it. And not necessarily, unless you want a dewy look, you don't want anything with a glow in it. You don't want anything that says luminous. You can have something that says dewy if you like that look. As a matter of fact, what I can do instead of using, I was gonna use my Benefit, the professional super setter but instead i'm going to go in and i'm going to use the makeup oh sorry the milani make it last dewy setting spray okay so i'm just going to spray some on my sponge my sponge feels pretty wet at this point so again i always pat it off make sure that i'm not getting too much in any one place and then i'm just going to go around my face and i'm going to again press very lightly here because this part we don't need to press more firmly like we did with foundation what we're trying to do here is melt everything together and that's what it does now it's going to look a little bit dewy because i have found that this one from milani doesn't look super dewy so i'm not going to look greasy but at the same time it's just going to look pretty and it's going to give me that perfected canvas so that's the end of number three of why your makeup might not be looking the most flawless it can look now i'm not saying that you need to do all of these steps every single time you sit down for me it takes very little time because i've had i got it down i just pick up the product and i go you know across my face and it's very quick for me the only thing that takes more time when i'm doing my makeup is really buffing in the foundation and my mascara and brows they take up a lot of time so the makeup that I do myself when I do a full face of makeup, it really only takes me about a half an hour. And that might seem like a lot, especially if you're somebody that has a job that's outside the home, you need to get out the door, you want quick, quick, quick. So I would just say, you know, do what you feel like you wanna do. But if you really want a very flawless canvas, it's gonna take a little bit of time to do. And I think that's where we get a little bit tripped up, especially as a mature woman. For me, makeup is so cathartic. It really is my therapy. It's my happy place. It's what makes me feel good about myself. And if I have my face done up, then I feel like I can conquer anything for the day. I hope that you did enjoy this video. I will leave in the comment section what I thought about this. This is the second time that I'm using the KVD new foundation. Not in the comments, sorry, down in the description box next to this foundation. I will tell you how it wore throughout the day and what I'm thinking about it. I think it covered really beautifully today, but I'll let you know what I think about that for sure. So down in the comment section, please tell me what you think about this, how you maybe do your foundation. I love to hear that input. It helps me out so much. And you guys are fabulous about giving me great ideas and you have such good tips and tricks and I love hearing them from you. So I hope everybody is happy, healthy, doing well. And even if you're not, 
not hopefully this brought a smile to your face today because i know so many of you are struggling i hear you you write to me and i feel for you i know that things are hard right now please come back around very soon we'll be together in another video i love you so much goodbye my dear friends